to go from this, which is absolutely nothing, to this, which is my beautiful Hayden girl. Now, if you haven't heard, this is something called a Hue Forge. So basically, it's 3D printed and it works in layers. So this is white, light blue, oh, sorry, white, blue, light blue, and then white on top. And as you can see, the back is white. So it starts off with a white on the build plate, then it does a dark blue, and then it does a light blue, and then it does white on top. And you can do this on a normal 3D printer without like an AMS or a color changer. Uh, you just have to manually swap out the filaments and with this it's only three color changes and I've actually done a second version which is white blue and then white so you can see the back is white so this is even less you know two color changes and basically I did two so I could see the difference in how it blends but I'll show you the process on how I actually made this and it'll make a bit more sense so let's go to the laptop first of all the Hue Forge software you can buy it for about $25 uh, if you're in the US basically there's an actual deal where if you buy the software they give you a coupon for the same price to buy filament um, it should pop up here there we go so you just click that probably make a coupon terms for personal use orders only coupon is good for $24 or 34, 33 Canadian for um, Polymaker and that's free shipping as well so basically you buy the software you get a free filament coupon as well and you can do the personal use lifetime I've personally got the limited commercial um, so I can like actually sell like the models I think or something like that um, but yeah, you can check the details it shows you um, you know which what like each one does but yeah once you got the software then you want to get the image now you can use like you can generate Hue Forges of any image, which is the awesome thing. It's kind of like lithophanes, any image you can create. So I'm going to actually show you how I created this image. It was just an AI creation. So one of the guys in my group, I have like a school community where, you know, we just kind of chat and share ideas. He told me about this AI generator, picture generator called Night Cafe. And this one was like an automatic prompt. Like the first thing I did, I just clicked on and then it had an automatic prompt I clicked like generate and then it came up with this beauty and I was like okay this is pretty cool and then yeah months later I got a Hue Forge and I was like let me actually create this image that I, that I made you know months ago and so let me quickly show you the process <laughs> once you've got Hue Forge downloaded open up Hue Forge so it's just a, a exe file and all you have to do is let me come up with that so this is fresh I've actually saved the default so it's got some colors in there from before um, I can quickly show you how to do that in a little bit um, so let me see where I saved it should be somewhere here date modifier should be at the bottom so just drag your image in there and this is a representation of the hue forge with the colors now these are the layers the layer numbers so it starts with a black and then it goes up to layer 10 and from 10 to 13 is red 13 to 21 is orange 21 to 27 is white so that's how it works you got a few options here this is how big it is uh, width and height layer height you can do 0.08 which is a standard or you can actually go down to 0.04 which um, Neo Koi which is a guy who creates a lot of Hue uh, Force tutorials he told me that you can do 0.04 millimeters on a 0.4 millimeter nozzle which is awesome so you can go ahead and do that base height is just your first um layer height you'll do that in the settings and we've got some other stuff here it's not too important this is like how thick the model is so i've raised this up from 0.48 to 0.72 just to make it a bit thicker luminance you probably want to start off in standard mode just to get a feel for it and the key thing is your filaments so you'll start off with like a bunch of stuff unarmed i've like started to put all my filaments in there i did like a whole process to put these in and i actually did tests to figure out the td so the td is basically how see-through your filament is the lower td means you can barely see through higher td means you can really see through and what that means is lower tds they don't blend you're not going to get like a smooth transition of the colors uh, so it's just going to go from one color to the next color higher tds they're more transparent so you can see it through a bit more which means it's going to have more of a gradual blend so if you see the difference between these two 
this is more of a blend and this is more sharp colors so you can see like the changes in the white so the white here is called eson cold white and that's like really a matte filament and this one is the cmyk white like at the top and that's more of a transparent translucent filament i guess so that's one of the things you'll you'll notice and i've got like another little example of how tds work so i was, I was doing some first layer tests something like this is quite thin you can kind of see through and then if we have like another layer then you can see it gets darker right so compared to from there to there you can see the color difference that's how td works like how thick the filament like layers are so you can see that's one layer that's two layers that's three layers Let's see if we can get some some good stuff there but yeah, that's pretty much a representation of how the TD works. So your filaments that are higher TD are going to start off with like, you know, two worth. Lower TDs might be like, you know, one worth. Kind of like a representation of that, but in terms of like layers and details of the image. So that's how it gets the actual blending. So I've got some pictures of how I created this one. So I think it's this one here. So yeah, just took a screenshot and you can see the layers. So it's nine layers of white, then you got blue, then I put gray for this one, light blue. So I was doing a bit of experimenting. This one's 0 0.4 millimeters. And let's see, I think I had another one, like a comparison. Let's see if I still have it here. I think it was these two. This is a comparison between the layer height. So if you have 0 0.08, that's that there versus 0 0.04 and this kind of it kind of blends in a little bit you see the details here so it makes a bit of a difference not too crazy but it's noticeable up close for sure so let's go ahead and start putting in the filament colors we want so once you've kind of you know put your new filaments in you can kind of put uh, some TDs are in there like default um, which they might they should be generally correct but they might not be so you can just pick your filament color um, you can add a TD afterwards and stuff like that so I've got my ones so for this one I used which one I used some solid light blue put that there I used some some ease on cold white which is like a really matte quick color changing filament and usually they have black at the bottom but for these ones I put white I just liked how it looked a bit more um, so I put white there and then I actually put a different white because it blends more it's got a bit of a high TD at three so I put that at the top so the top colors will blend a bit better and then I put this cyan blue and then what you can do is start to play around with the sliders like the amount of layers of each color and that has a difference on how much color shows up in these cool thing I learned a cool trick is press the middle mouse button and that shows you more of a real representation of where the filament kind of lays down this is like like normal mode it's like it shows it more blended than it actually is and then here it shows it less blended than it actually is so your actual hue forge would be somewhere in between so if you look at this hue forge again and then you see this middle button normal middle button normal so your actual hue forge will be like something in between that and you can actually change the scroll wheel or the layers while you hold the middle button so you can see the difference in the effect it has while you scroll you can also change the white top layers but be careful with changing the top layers because it makes your actual depth thinner if you have it on the dynamic depth setting because uh, yeah hue forges can be quite thin if you don't have the right depth this one i've actually raised it from 0 0.48 it is a default and i've raised it up to 0 0.72 and what that basically means is if you have white like at the corners like that let's say this white part here is going to be 0 0.96 millimeters thick which is pretty thin right you know if you go higher up it's, it gets thicker but that's how it works and then the blue part you see the blue here will be 1.12 the light blue part will be 1.92 you know roughly speaking right and then the white parts at the top will be thicker so that's how it transitions and gets the detail 
but basically you want to play around with the sliders until you get the colors that you like in your hue forge but make sure you don't go too thin so we'll know how thin it is going to be you know you don't want to get surprised with it and hit the middle mouse button to kind of double check how things look while you do the sliders and once you're happy kind of with your result something like that looks kind of cool then you just want to hit save Control s is a shortcut i did a little test there so i do test one and what that does is it saves multiple files so i did a little shortcut windows e and then downloads and it'll give you these three files stl a description file which shows you where you're going to do your layer changes in your software and then it has the actual hue forge file which if you open up it'll bring up this with your filaments your pictures and stuff like that so i've already got an example in hue forge this is previous but same idea and when you slice your plate i already did the color changes but let me take these off pretty simple to do color changes you just want to make sure your filaments are in there you just click there and then right click and change filament now that's if you have an ams or color changer if you don't you can just hit add pause obviously you won't be for the first layer but you'd hit add pause so let's go over here to the description so at layer 9 we're switching to blue so go to layer 9 right click switch to blue now if you don't have a color changer you just want to add a pause and then manually change it when your 3d printer tells you to you know when it actually pauses the 3d printer that's your cue but i have a color changer so i hit that next filament is 13 uh light blue so you go to 13 right click change it to light blue next one is 21 you want the white cmyk 21 white cmyk and then you want to slice that it's going to show you how it's going to look roughly and make sure your settings are correct to show you the settings of what you want here 100% infill, 0.08 millimeter layer height, 0.16 initial layer height. Now I have a Hue Forge profile here, so I've already got these inbuilt. Here's the uh, infill settings, 999 bombshells, or 100% infill, either one. And that's generally the gist of it. Same speeds, pretty much. And you can see that's how the Hue Forge is looking in the software. I make sure to double check this and see how it looks you know you don't want it to be looking all crazy and it's not matching that means there's something wrong um this was a slightly different sliders compared to this um because i imported it before but same idea you know you just want to print that send it to your 3d printer and let that print and then five hours later you get yourself something like this or something like this so yeah that's the whole process you can do a bit of ai generation for the pictures or find another picture online that you like you know open up your hue full software add in your colors play around the sliders and have a representation of how it looks save the file put it into your slicer put in the color changes and then slice that file now a couple things to keep in mind is the width and the height it'll show you in the software usually it's relative so However big the file is that you that you sent or the photo, that's how big it's going to be in there. And then you can change it and it will change like relative. So if you put 300, that will change to 300 because it was already 200 by 200, right? And you can add a border if you want. It will be 3 by 4 millimeters. That just adds a border. Uh, if it's transparent, you can do that and have like an outline of the actual image. So I had like an eagle that I did uh, for a client. and there's basically no background so it's actually just the shape of the eagle without the square bit or any borders or anything like that um, layer has 0.08 you can do 0.04 as well and generally speaking you want to be in standard mode this was kind of what confused me i was in like another mode when i was experimenting and i didn't change it back and i was like confused why everything was looking kind of weird but yeah be mainly on standard mode to learn the software make sure your depth isn't too crazy too low you know two millimeters you want to be like above that like if you if you've been free printing you kind of know how thick that would be you know um you could do like a get a test somewhere maybe a layer thickness test um it's probably one of like thingiverse right let's see i know there's a lithophane test 
Um, we could do maybe layer thickness. Let's see if there's something out there. Uh, transparency. Yeah, this is the one that I did. So this is like a representation of how thick the layers would be. You know, so you can see how thick 1.6 is, how flimsy it is, stuff like that. Uh, I'll probably like save this as a link and put it in the description. But yeah, yeah, I've got my little 3D printing group here on school. Feel free to join. I'll probably put a link in the description there as well. But yeah, that's generally how you make the Hue Forge and it came out a lot better than I expected. This is like one of my early ones. But yeah, it looks really good. Good detail. But yeah, man, thanks for watching. You know, feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll be making more videos. Peace out.